Well, good morning and welcome to a college football edition of Tip Off. Glad to be back with you. Uh, my schedule, <clears throat> getting back at it, is this Friday. I will uh, be live at level9sports.com, which is an amazing website for uh, those of us that are ski junkies and outdoors people. And uh, the site is actually serves you know the world. Obviously, it's .com very successfully with unbelievable prices, but the warehouse and is out of Salt Lake. So we'll be at Level 9 Sports. You can stop by. Thursday night, I'll be live on the Ute broadcast against Montana State, and uh, we'll be doing some social networking interaction with you. You can follow me on Twitter throughout that game and send me things on Twitter at Locked On Sports as well. We'll try to get that into the broadcast. Steve Brown, Mike Norseth on the call. I'll be on the sidelines for that one. Uh, today, with Utah playing on Thursday, I'm going to take a look at the Utes, and then tomorrow or Friday, I'll try to take a look at the Cougars, depending on uh, some time things. I'll try to get these tip-offs done as much as possible, though, frankly, this is kind of an hour I spend working before I get the kids every morning, and sometimes it's an hour I spend working out, depending on the day. So, uh, I'll try to figure all of that out. Uh, you know, I, I really, to this, sit here today to talk to you, and and you fans are taking this very personally. I, I still don't know. Uh, I, I did a bunch of research. If you follow me on Twitter at Locked on Sports, you, you got a bunch of garbage of Sagra and this and that. But I was just trying to get a grasp on the jump level that Utah is taking. We've talked about this all lot. It's it's different. But, but I mean, I just if you take a second and you look at the Sagra ratings – of last year, and I'm not saying this is how good the teams are last year, but last year Utah played, Iowa State was 65, Pitt was 32, then San Jose State finished 161, UNLV 131, New, uh, New Mexico 170, Wyoming 108, Colorado State 130, and then Air Force was in the 30s, San Diego State was in the 30s, BYU was 45, Notre Dame was 19, TC was great, there were four. But you have this middle rung, and we all know this, but it's just so daunting when you suddenly look at it on paper. In contrast to this year, USC 22, Arizona State 23, Washington 28, Oregon State 29, Arizona 30, Pitt 32, Cal 33, BYU 45, UCLA 62, Washington State 79, and Colorado 68. The end of the season, I guess, does get a little bit easier, but it's just such an a incredible contrast to what, uh, they have done before. The, the thing I think is really interesting on this schedule and, and Montana State game, there's a lot of things to work through, but they're, they're, the Utes are putting in this brand new offense, and, and I think it's the most under thought about thing in regards to this that Aaron Roderick is maybe a very good coordinator one day, and Dave Schramm, they're both very, very inexperienced last year. They, they had never really been coordinators before, and here they were about to enter into the Pac 12, and boy, that's a that's a pretty quantum leap um, for them, and I think could have been a real problem. And there's some things to look at last year. I think Utah got outscored in the first quarter. Um, they obviously had, had that amazing second quarter at Iowa State that's, that sends those numbers in the right direction. But that you know maybe they didn't quite have the plans and didn't quite have the system, and maybe it didn't really fit Jordan Wynn in a lot of ways. And I think all these things are really important, and I like the fact they're going back under center. I just think that's how football is supposed to be played. I do think it's good for Wynn. I think it's good for their athletes and the receivers. They can play a short, quicker game, yard after catch. I think you'll see them really try to establish the run and be a very quick passing game from everybody I've talked to. And, and that's, I think, to their advantage. That quicker passing game should keep Jordan healthy in a lot of ways. But when you look at their schedule, schedule, USC's not a very good defensive team. They really struggled last year with Monty Kiffin. And BYU's solid. BYU is they're not great. They're not elite. They're solid. You know, Broncos systems really just make you make plays in front of them. And if you're not ready to go you know, 9, 10, 11 play drives, you, you'll make the mistake and Broncos teams will then get you to, to give them the ball back. And I think that that'll be a fabulous test because the next three games are arguably the three best defenses that they're going to face, and not this year, and they might be the three best defenses in the Pac-12. Washington has Alameda Tamo in the front, 330-pound nose guard who's unbelievable. Great corners in Trufant uh, on one side, and 
and their linebackers are young and inexperienced, but that's that defensive team last year was really was terrific. Arizona State's got this linebacking crew, even with McGee here, even having lost one of their corners. They have most of their starters back. They're going to be a good defensive team. Erickson is a uh, fundamentally unsound defensive coach where he'll try lots of things, and you're going to have to take advantage of it, and they often give up a lot that way. And then finally, Cal last year had a very quietly great defensive year. Uh, Stanford torched them. Oregon torched them. Them. They torched most teams, but otherwise, if you go back look at what Cal did last year, they had a unbelievably solid defensive year. So right out of the shoot, this offense is going to be tested at a very, very, very high level. Uh, the other one, and, and we'll talk about this on the TV broadcast on Thursday, is the number zero, and that is. And you know this, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, the number of carries in the backfield, the number of starts in the secondary, and the number of kicks by a place kicker. All at zero. Those guys better get ready fast. Um, will Utah be okay? And that, I think, is the biggest question, and I don't know. Um, a lot of it's going to deal with health. A lot of it how a season determines, runs out. Uh, their talent level uh, everyone likes to say, well, depth is a real issue. I am I'm, I really think when I look at the Utes right now, and this will probably change, but as they enter into the Pac-12 today, they're not as good on the top five. And then if you've got you got a little under 60 players, but they're not as good on the top five, for, then the bottom 20 is probably not quite as good. But I think that bottom 20 is better than they get credit for. Um, and, the, and the star factor is... Is probably where they're the you know the best players in this team Walker Tony Bergstrom, uh, Star, Brian Black and th those guys just aren't as good as the best players on the other Pac-12 teams right now, and so there I think there's a little gap at the top uh, as well. Whittingham should be fine, but then there's the system question for Whittingham. His coaching is great. The, then the final question that I've had since the day they said they're going to the Pac-12. It's funny, you can go through all this camp, but if you actually just kind of sit down and calm down, you'll end up at the very at the exact same point you started with. And, and that is their defensive system, which is to stop the run, crowd the boxes, play a lot of man-on-man -on, -man on the corners. You know, last year got annihilated by the three high-level quarterbacks they faced in Moore, in Dalton, and in Lindley. Lindley went nuts, you know, for 500. So, I mean, But they allowed 1,200 yards out of those three guys. A little misleading because Lindley's 500. Okay, those three guys are probably all pros, but so is Barkley. So is folks at Arizona. The big kid at Arizona State is like 6'9". That quarterback is probably not a pro, but he's pretty good. UCLA's weak at the quarterback position. Washington you're getting them at the right time because they've got a young quarterback that they're just developing. Washington State's quarterback is great. And their receivers are pretty good. Marcus Wilson's really good. So, and Cal's kid is interesting. He transfers from Buffalo, and I think it'll be really interesting to see where he is in the process. And Oregon State's kid, Ryan Katz, is, you know, is not Kellen Moore. He's not those. But I, I would guess he probably gets drafted somewhere along the way. So, that's going to be the other issue is playing that style of bump and run up on the guys, man coverage against a higher tier wide receiver with higher tier quarterbacks. Does it work? All right. That is our first edition of tip off. I will wrap it with this. This, as we sit here today, is my Pac-12 power poll. See if I can get this off the top of my head correctly. Oregon is one. Stanford is two. I believe Washington is three. I'll hold with Arizona State at four. I think Cal is five, so that other division is packed. I think that Arizona, despite no offense alignment, has just got a bunch of talent at six. Utah at seven. Um... I'm missing somebody. I knew I couldn't do this off the top of my head. I can do the bottom. Uh, Colorado, I think, will be better than people think at eight. I will. I have forgotten somebody. The bottom, the 12th is UCLA. 
excuse me, the twelfth is Washington. Yeah, the twelfth is UCLA. The eleventh is Oregon State. The tenth is Washington State. I think they'll be a little bit better. They're still short. And ninth is whoever I have forgotten. Colorado? No, I had Colorado at eight. Who have I forgotten? You tell me. Have a good one.